All right, so welcome back. So I'm thinking about two more potential situations where basically regression to medi mediocrity is playing a part, but the assumption of certain events is actually very counterintuitive and actually makes no sense. So one of them is this idea of penalizing for mistakes and complimenting for good behavior. Yes, I understand the whole psychological aspect of it. If you penalize someone for their mistakes, they're probably scared to death of you and they probably will try their uttermost best not to have that happen again, right? Same thing with complimenting uh, awards. Um, the idea is fairly simple. If they're doing something well, you compliment them and hopefully they keep that up. Yes, that's true and most likely that does occur, but you gotta be very careful because all of a sudden certain results you see might not be what it is. What, are, what do I mean by that? Let's just say, for example, there is an event. The mistake is an outlier. It's not something that normally occurs. You get it in your head, you criticize, you penalize, and you yell, you scream, and all of a sudden the next time that kind of event happens again, but the mistake does not occur, you get it in your head that you think, all right, what prevented that mistake from occurring? Well, I yelled at the person, I penalized them, I was a complete butt to them, right? That worked. That's why the mistake didn't occur again. Maybe? But most likely is the fact that the mistake is not normally occurring, is not close to the mean in there anyway, and so the next time a similar event happens, it's just getting closer to the mean. So that doesn't mean that penalizing actually worked, right? The same argument could be for complimenting. Some people get it in their head, and maybe it's an Asian culture thing, but or certain Asian culture, I shouldn't generalize, right? That if you compliment someone for doing well, right, they get it in their head and they're gonna screw up the next time. Maybe that's not the case. Maybe them performing that well is an outlier and the average is actually not the case. So the chances, the high likelihood is that they will perform a little poorer because it's gonna get closer than means. So there you go. That's one very counterintuitive thing that you can ponder. The other thing is this idea of implementing policies. I've seen it several times and I can't really think of exactly, you know, law, whatever, 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 but I have seen this argument come up time and time again, right? All right, there's this heinous crime that happened in this specific area. Therefore, as a politician, I'm gonna implement this policy to counter this heinous crime. And the next thing you know, the heinous crime doesn't occur anymore. Look at that, my policy worked. No more heinous crime. That might not be the case. Once again, regression to mediocrity, regression to means. It could be that that heinous crime is an outlier. The chances, the likelihood of it happening again is actually fairly slim. So when you implement a policy and the next time something like that, you know, or that time frame happen and then the heinous crime doesn't happen, it might not be that the policy is as effective as you think it is. It might be that, guess what? Heinous crime, outlier, frequency, less likely, therefore regression to the mean the next time is not as likely to happen. Maybe the policy has nothing to do with it, right? I've seen stuff like that happen several times. So, therefore, we have to be very careful. It's very counterintuitive, but it plays so much in everyday lives. So, regression to mediocrity. All right, so now that I've made it basically sort of depressing, right? Things that you thought you had control over, you maybe don't. Things that you thought you contributed to make something positive, maybe you didn't. Here's the caveat though. Those are talking about random events. And yes, they do have influence, even in situations that are not completely random. But think of it this way. The caveat is this. For example, I mentioned that if you have two tall parents and they have a kid, most likely the child's gonna be shorter than the two tall parents. The key is that they're gonna be shorter than the two tall parents. You will still have influence because it's not a completely random event, right? Two tall parents, their genetics are most likely for tall people. So the child is most likely gonna be taller than the average population, the whole population. They're gonna most likely be taller than the mean. There are chances that they could be shorter because you know, it's still somewhat random. 
but there is confounding factor there is certain influence so on the opposite spectrum same thing if you have two short parents most likely the kid is going to be taller than the parents but the kid is most likely going to be shorter than the mean the average right because guess what the parents are outlier their genetics might have an influence therefore the kid is most likely going to be shorter than the average population so i just want to put that little caveat in there because i don't know if it gives you hope dashes hope maybe you have certain things that you can control not completely at random but if it doesn't help you in any way then well you learn something new so anyways thank you for watching if you haven't already please like comment and subscribe i will see you in the next video